Hail to all heavy metal maniacs watching this video. This time I'm going to speak about five albums that help shape doom metal as we know it. Stay tuned. Welcome back Metal Maniacs, as I told you in the introduction, uh, this is a new episode which will tackle the five most important, most genre-defining albums of Doom Metal. Those who know me know how much Doom Metal is special to me. I love most of heavy metal's subgenres as long as they incorporate an old school metal ethos and uh, style basically. But Doom Metal is the subgenre which is most close to my heart. I started listening to metal through Doom Metal, first of all, through Black Sabbath, which is my all time favorite band, and gradually through even the influence of local metal legends Forsaken. I diverted more into Doom Metal, got to know Doom Metal much more, and it was my first love, and basically, it's still my preferred genre of heavy metal. I love the heaviness of Doom Metal, I love the style, the special kind of brotherhood actually, um, because Doom Metal is possibly the most underrated subgenre of heavy metal and therefore is the underground of the underground. And uh, there's a close, very close niche of followers of Doom Metal and it always attracted me for, for its passion, for its like-mindedness basically, more so than in other subgenres of heavy metal. But enough of uh, the introduction, let's delve deeper inside the five albums I have chosen as the most influential for doom metal. So we have arrived to the first album of from the five albums I have chosen in this list and the first album is this one. And I'm speaking about uh, Saint Vitus Born Too Late, released in 1986 by SST records. Um, this is actually not the first album of the band. Generally, when, I, when we're speaking about genre-defining albums, it is the debut album because it brings something new to the scene, uh, a new sound basically. But in case of Saint Vitus, it's not the first album that I have chosen from, from their catalogue, but actually the third one. And I have chosen this album because it contains the doom metal anthem, basically. Um, and I'm speaking about the title track called Born Too Late. This track is uh, highly regarded by most of doom metal enthusiasts because it represents the lyrics, especially, represents the feelings of most of the people into doom metal. Now, this can be translated to most of the metalheads, basically, because metal is a minority, have to fight against prejudice of other people because they think metalheads are criminals or no good people basically and we know obviously that's all bullshit basically excuse the word but it's still the idea nowadays by 2021 uh, these kind of stereotypes should be something of the of the past basically but anyway so speaking about the lyrics one of the verses goes something like this they say i look like the living dead they say i can't have much in my head they say my songs are much too slow but they don't know the things i know so as you can see, most of these lyrics, at least from my perspective, were the first time and I heard and I read those lyrics, uh, it really affected me because I, I could completely understand the lyrics of uh, Scott uh, Weinrich, who is the, uh, the vocalist on this album. It's important to say that the previous two albums, St. Vitus had another vocalist, which is Scott Riegers. So this is the first album that uh, Scott Wino Weinrich is on vocals with St. Vitus. Uh, Wino, who is renowned from the band The Obsessed, amongst many other bands, but previously to St. Vitus, he was into The Obsessed, which is another great doom metal act. And if you don't know them, go check them out. St. Vitus were actually named uh, Tyrant at the beginning, but then eventually they changed the name to St. Vitus after the Black Sabbath track St. Vitus Dance. St. Vitus were also really popular in the underground LA punk scene, mostly because they had played on a number of times along with the band 
Black Flag. But with the arrival of Wino, their sound took a different turn, a darker, more sinister sound. And uh, eventually this album came out with uh, this collaboration between Wino and the rest of the guys in St. Vitus. A nice memory I have when I saw St. Vitus live was um, when I was in the, on the front row waiting for St. Vitus to start the set. I was speaking with a friend of mine here, one of the speakers on one of the sides of the uh, of the stage. And uh, whilst I was talking, I just heard uh, Dave Chandler, the guitarist from St. Vitus, shout, uh, let the hammer of doom fall. This is St. Vitus and immediately went into the first riff of the first track on their set list and I was totally blown away with the sound, almost literally blown away because uh, the sound was so heavy, was so powerful that it actually moved me. I will never forget that that moment because first of all I was really looking forward to see them for the first time. It was the first and only time up till now. I still remember that verse and the initial riff it really was one of the heaviest band I, I've ever heard live actually. The lyrics of St. Vitus are uh, mainly about drugs, about personal problems, um, war, uh, psychedelic drugs and and if I had to read the lyrics from the track Dying Inside, just an example of what would you expect it would be something like this. Now I have lost everything and I really don't care. Everybody that I have known has outcast me here. And you can really feel the, the pain, the difficulties in adapting in a society which one can't make his own basically. Over the years a lot of people have told me um, I don't like doom metal because it's too negative, it's too depressive and obviously from the lyrics I have already mentioned how can you really say that it isn't? The lyrics aren't so so negative, so depressive but I view it from the other perspective basically that if you are a person, an individual who's having these kinds of problems, reading these lyrics and knowing that other people, even people who you admire as successful musicians, also have these problems I think it's it, it's actually a help in the sense that you don't end up feeling like you are the uh, unluckiest pe person on earth for having these feelings but rather there are other people who are like you and it's good that you uh, can speak to other people who will understand you so these kind of lyrics are not actually um, even though they speak about negative things but they can be a helpful resource for people who are passing through difficult times and I think doom metal with it with with its almost intimate kind of approach really aids in these kinds of issues. That's my personal perspective, not about not based on any scientific research of course, but I think uh, there's some kind of truth in that as well. In general can't help but admire Saint Vitus because they were uh, formed in a period where and in an area of the world where the glam, the uh, glittery and fleshy scene was prevalent, whereas St. Vitus really took a kind of a minimalistic, nihilistic approach to the scene and uh, even though their uh, input and their influence on the scene at the time was minimal, but this album really forged St. Vitus as one of the pillars eventually in the years to come of doom metal and it forged a very dirty sound, very kind of punkish sound into doom metal. That is why this album and St. Vitus in general are really important for the development of uh, doom metal throughout the years. St. Vitus Born Too Late. So the second album I chose is um, Trouble's first album Psalm 9. Um, this album was actually named uh, Trouble as well, but eventually when their fourth album was released in 1990, which was also named Trouble, uh, the reissues of this album were being named as Psalm 9 and everyone, most of the people know it as Psalm 9. This album was released in 1984 and it is quite possibly one of the first, if not the first heavy metal album dealing with themes of Christianity. Christianity has a long history in heavy metal, has been long associated, its iconography also associated with uh, heavy metal and uh, this basically started quite possibly with Black Sabbath which is the first heavy metal band ever and also the first doom metal band ever because the sound of Black Sabbath in the beginning was uh, actually doom metal. As most of you know, uh, Tony Iommi uh, used to wear a cross on all his live performances, crosses on the album covers, uh, stage props with crosses, so I think uh, this association comes from there. 
love it or hate it not i know there's people who really don't like uh, christian lyrics but i think within the doom metal sphere they fit really well and trouble built on that notion of uh, black sabbath with regards to christianity and the themes dealing with uh, with that subject uh, which perfectly suit the dreadful and apocalyptic kind of feel of doom metal in general surely this is uh, i can speak about uh, doom metal and the religious aspects and iconography and heavy metal for uh, a long time basically but i'm sure i will do a future video on this subject so uh, i take the opportunity to tell you if you're liking the content of this video to subscribe and like our video and share it of also on social media and stay tuned because one of the subjects i will tackle is issues notions of uh, religion being christianity uh, satanism and other forms of religious uh, ideology within the spectrum of heavy metal so that is a video for the future but with regards to this album um, this is a uh, a blueprint of uh, doom, traditional doom metal basically if you hear the riffs on the tempter or uh, busters will pay this is no hippie no uh, all love kind of uh, approach even though as we said they have uh, associated with white metal christian and christian lyrics but rather as the lyrics are kind of a warning message to mankind uh, not to lose its, its its road and uh, the track basically to the road which leads to uh, to god basically but in a very uh, heavy very uh, angry way basically because obviously doom metal is heavy music and not uh, and not pop music so you can have to associate the lyrics with the sound we have and it really fits perfectly eric wagner's voice his raspy kind of stressed voice really adds to that feel of dreadfulness of end of the world kind of uh, time basically not much else to say about this album other than that then this is a seminal album uh, which released in 1984 really put doom metal in the forefront helped uh, influence other doom metal bands which came after them and therefore i couldn't leave out this landmark album in, in doom metal basically so there it is trouble psalm 9 um, released in 1984 through metal blade records so we have arrived to the third album in this list and i have chosen to put this album here which is pentagram relentless now same as the album before it, uh, Trouble of Trouble, Psalm 9, which was originally named Trouble. This album was originally named also Pentagram, but eventually the name was changed to Relentless. And nowadays everyone knows it as Relentless. Pentagram, who are regarded as the Black Sabbath of the United States, a band that started in 1971. In the 70s, although they tried, uh, they there was a lot of lineup changes, a lot of drug problems. In the band especially with uh, frontman and uh, main band member bobby leibling the band started then uh, getting things done basically in early 80s when with the arrival uh, in the band of uh, victor griffin on guitars um, joe hassel van der on drums and uh, martin sweeney on bass actually in the early 80s the name of the band was detro but uh, then in 1984 the name was rechanged readopted because pentagram was the original name in the 70s um, the name was readopted in 1984 the band has had a couple of close calls with regards to uh, making it big basically uh, there's a story that in 1975 producer and manager of blue oyster card went to see pentagram they liked them they invited them to record a demo um, but apparently bobby Lightling had an issue during production with one of these personnels and uh, everything went basically out of the window in december of the same year the band also rehearsed in front of uh, gene simmons and paul stanley from kiss but uh, they didn't uh, make an impression or uh, so it seems on them and uh, nothing really happened out of that that encounter basically although released in 1985 this album was actually recorded in 1982 with a different mix um, than that that was released in 1985 when this album then started being really released by peaceful records which was the band then who was given um, the rise for the reissue um, the Peaceville Records took back the 1982 original mix 
and from then onwards every release of this album that you will hear is the actually the 1982 recording rather than the 1985 recording at this point in time pentagram were much heavier much uh, had a much more sinister more obscure sounding than they did in the 1970s which was more kind of a hard rock approach um, this mainly thank thanks to the guitar tone of uh, guitarist Victor Griffin which was insanely heavy and still is we had the opportunity to host Victor Griffin at our own festival at the Malta Doom Metal Festival and uh, his sound he used two cabinets uh, if not more I'm not sure but uh, for sure two cabinets and in a small venue the heaviness was uh, unbelievable so Victor Griffin kind of invented this sound of pentagram which later would uh, influence so many so many bands who started playing doom metal obviously Victor Griffin was influenced highly by Tony Iommi but they he took it actually up a notch more so than even Trouble was heavy but Trouble had two guitarists but the tone on pentagram is different it's warmer it's uh, it, it's kind of more menacing kind of uh, if you hear for example one of the tracks i think uh, sinister for example if you grab sinister that uh, initial riff that opening riff is one of the metal finest moments i think if if you like the heaviness and if you like that uh, sinister obscure kind of feel from your music so there it is the third album pentagram with relentless a seminal album a seminal band for doom metal the phrase the black sabbath of the us really fits pentagram perfectly so we have arrived to the uh, fourth album i have chosen from these five albums that influenced doom metal and this is basically the band and the album that shaped not only my interest in doom metal but heavy metal in general and i'm speaking about candlemas and the album is epicus doomicus metallicus and obviously with an album title like that it can only be this album can only be a masterpiece jokes apart this album was released in 19 86 uh, through Black Dragon Records. Now there's a, also another interesting story that was told to me and that I don't know if I have read anywhere else but it was told to me directly. Um, I hope most of you know about the epic metal band uh, Manila Road and uh, the main man behind the band Mark Shelton, rest in peace. And when they came, when we had Manila Road play in Malta, Mark Shelton told me the story that since he knew the guys in Black Dragon Records they sent him a demo from a band to listen and give his advice about this band and they should sign them or not and actually that band was none other than Candlemas and uh, Mark Shelton's reply to this to to this demo basically was to the label was you must be crazy if you don't sign them and that's how much of an impression they left on him and obviously Black Dragon did so immediately this album displays something which neither of the other four albums that I have mentioned in this list one other left to mention after this one uh, don't have which is uh, the epic feel in doom metal now uh, what Candlemas plays is regarded as epic doom metal which is more bombastic more kind of high-pitched vocals again apocalyptic lyrics end of the world with a more though bombastic look towards it this record was actually recorded at Thunderload records which is the studio at the time owned by Ragnar Valkvist from the band Heveload again another band for those who don't know them that you should check out Candlemas from the words of uh, main uh, songwriter from the band which is Life Edling the, the bassist was heavily influenced by the sound by the music of Trouble which is one of the albums in this list which I have already spoken about but as I said uh, Candlemas took that sound the traditional doom sound of the early 80s and made it more uh, grandiose more bombastic more epic basically that's why it's called epic doom metal and obviously the founders of epic doom metal are none other than Candlemas. Candlemas at the time of recording of this album didn't actually have a vocalist so they found a guy with the name of Johan Langvist who used to play with another band called uh, Jonah Quids a band influenced from the new wave of British heavy metal more traditional heavy metal sounding and uh, they invited him uh, to see if he was willing to record vocals for this album and he eventually did without knowing any of the tracks he didn't even know who the band was Candlemas tried to keep 
uh, Johan Langvist with the band after the recording, but he was not interested to continue, although he liked what he heard, it wasn't the sound that he really wanted from this band, and also he didn't want to play other people's uh, music, he wanted to be to, to sing his own music basically, music written by himself obviously, the main songwriter behind Candlemas was and remained life adling throughout the years and unfortunately um, Langvist didn't stay with the band, obviously they got another vocalist thereafter which is the renowned uh, Marcolin Messiah, um, who is regarded as the uh, vocalist of Candlemas, but in this first album the vocals are by Johan Langvis, which presently and from 2018, if I'm not mistaken, uh, has taken back the reins as the main vocalist of Candlemas and now he plays with them live also, live shows together. Not much to say other than uh, that this is uh, the blueprint of epic doom metal, it's shaped my life and uh, so many lives of uh, doom metal enthusiasts, uh, the first track Solitude with that soft acoustic intro and then the immediate riffing behind it, um, heavy slow demons gate, um, the voice, the demon voice at the start of the track is actually life handling voice slow down basically, um, Crystal Blall, Blackstone Wheel there in Under the Oak and uh, the epic of the epic, uh, A Sorcerer's Pledge, as the last track, which is my favorite track on this album. But this this is perfection. This album is a masterpiece, and uh, the guys say they didn't really know what they were doing at the time. Uh, they just wanted to, to record whatever they have written because they liked it and say why not. They thought everything would end there. Uh, who would have told them that this would have become Doom Metal's, possibly Doom Metal's finest hour ever. So that's how important this album is. And if you have any interest in Doom Metal whatsoever, start with this one. Because it's the Doom Metal album. And you might say, so if it's that important, why didn't you put it in the first place? And you will know why I didn't put them in, f in the first place in a few seconds. So we have arrived to the first album, the doom metal album that uh, forged the genre basically, the sub genre, and I'm going way back to 1971. Now possibly you have already understood which album I'm going to speak about, if not at least which band I'm going to speak about, and I'm speaking about none other than the greatest band in the world ever as far as I'm concerned, and this Black Sabbath and the album is master of reality. For me personally, this is the first doom metal album ever, from start to finish. The previous albums by Black Sabbath had a mix of doom metal, hard rock, this is doom metal. Listen to the riffs in Into the Void, Lord of this World, and I challenge anyone to tell me that that is not doom metal. Some people say, but Black Sabbath is if you listen to Master of Reality, even though they had that sound, but uh, the answer to that is actually uh, Tony Iommi uh, downtuned his guitars more because the previous tuning was hurting his fingers due to the accident he had before uh, even releasing the first Black Sabbath album. But he decided to downtune even more in this in this album. Obviously, Geezer did the same with his bass, and obviously there at that moment in time, Doom Metal was born. So. Even though I said previously that Candlemas and Epicus for me is the epitome of doom metal, but you can beat Master of Reality in this regard. I mean, it's the first doom metal album ever. This album actually was quite a success considering uh, that Black Sabbath didn't get much positive criticism by uh, music journalists at the time, and it reached the number 5 on the UK charts and number 8 on the US charts. Also, it's funny how most of the times, and even later times, basically, that Black Sabbath were always as associated with Satanism. And now I mentioned this uh, subject of religion within heavy metal a few moments ago, and as I told you, I will be doing more videos delving more deeper in this subject. But if you get, for example, the track After Forever, which is a very Christian-themed track, basically, if you have to read the lyrics, I mean the opening verses, have you ever thought about your soul? Can it be saved? Or perhaps you think that when you're dead, you just stay in your grave. Is God just a thought within your head or is he part of you? Is Christ just a name that you read in a book when you were at school? I mean, it's clear that all the people that say that or used to say that Black Sabbath had anything to do with Satanism, they really weren't following Black Sabbath at all. They're just speaking because they 
what just wanted to speak. You know what they say about opinions most of the time. Um, if you don't, uh, just search it in Google. Sweet Leaf is an iconic, almost tonerish uh, track. Um, by the way, the the cuff in the beginning of Sweet Leaf is actually Tony Iommi. Um, it wasn't meant to be recorded. Basically, he was recording some parts, some acoustic parts, and he started cuffing, and then. Uh, part of that uh, that sound capture was included before before the start of the track Children of the Grave which is said to be also by Ozzy himself if I'm not mistaken his favorite Black Sabbath track ever and that sound of the drums really give the track a, a plodding feel kind of I think it's, a, it's an ingenious touch um, but as I said Lord of this World Into the Void Solitude is a more acoustic track Tony Aomi on this track bass both the guitar piano and flute so he expresses also his uh, musical talents on other instruments this is the birth of heavy metal along with the other first six albums of black Sabbath, because that's those six albums are kind of a, a package all together and there is the birth of heavy metal the birth of doom metal started as as far as i'm concerned in my opinion with this album right here so if that's the case uh, and doom metal was born in 1971 that makes doom metal the oldest subgenre of heavy metal and i've have always had this this thing that i didn't understand with people that they used to tell me uh, they didn't like doom metal and i used to tell them but do you like black, black sabbath and they used to reply yes of course you cannot not like black sabbath i mean they're inventors of heavy metal then if you like black sabbath you will like doom metal. Maybe not all of it, but you will certainly find things that you will like. So my message to you is search, don't let certain styles of doom metal, funeral doom or sludge, sway you away from what the real sound of doom metal is. Search, listen to the bands, listen to these bands that I have listed in this album. I will put links in the description and I'm sure you will find something that you like. Some will not like trash, some will not like black, some will not like that, because they are an evolution of the sound. But the metal is, is uh, the sound of heavy metal in its barest form, in its infancy, basically, which is a sound that most of us love, basically. So that is my advice to you with this video. So there you go. Those are the five albums I have chosen that, uh, in my opinion, helped shape the history of doom metal i hope you have found this content interesting um, it was a pleasure um, gathering uh, this information for me because i was revisiting also some of these albums and finding certain details and things which i didn't know before what, what i can tell you is uh, subscribe to the channel like the video share the video it would really help us really give us the incentive we need to continue doing these videos as i told you a lot more subjects to be tackled in the coming weeks and months and uh, your support will be greatly appreciated until then stay safe stay well and uh, metal on cheers mm -hmm.